All right, today I wanna to share a little bit about how maybe we can get a little bit more automation out of Aculinx. Now, they have their automation manager they introduced not too long ago. They didn't do a great job from what I've seen as far as the material to help us understand how to use it great, but I'm gonna explain some of the stuff, but the true power of any software relies on or lies in being able to communicate with other softwares. Because for example, if I wanna leverage a texting app such as Bums, which has two-way text, has phone lines, has recordings, has some automations, has AI. It's cool that you can send a text from Aculinx, but that's how can we take Aculinx that's very limited, very locked door, doesn't want you to send us information anywhere else. How can we take that and send it to another place? Sorry. So I want to show you how to do it and I'm going to walk you through this. It's a little bit complex, but it's not horrible if you follow with me. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to add an automation. Now, in the automations, remember the light switch idea that you're going to set up a trigger and the trigger sends a certain amount of information. And then there's a action, right? So our trigger in the scenario that I told you, let's just say it's a milestone and it's a job complete. So when a job is complete, easy enough. And you can see their triggers that they have, and it's a little bit limited, but we're going to try to make best use using conditions, filters, whatever we can. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's a residential property. I'm going to go ahead and say it's a insurance job. I'm going to go ahead and say it's a roofing job and apply that. So there's my filter. So every time a job hits this category, this trigger is going to happen. But now what is going to happen? So in Aculinx is you can only send text messages, which are not necessarily very efficient because you can't look at them, at least to my knowledge, you can't look at them on your app. You can't communicate back and forth. You can't call from that phone number. You can't make it a two-way conversation. You can't leverage AI. You can't, a lot of things, right? So you create a task, fair enough. Uh, but again, you're counting on a human. The goal here is to automate, right? We want to automate. We want to leverage technology that's been there now for years and now is getting even more and more important to the success of small business. So email. Yeah, let's see if you can send an email to somebody, but what do I care about that? I'm going to show you how to manipulate or do a little work around to get more power from your Aculinx here. So what I've already done is I've created a vendor, a uh, boss up, and that vendor is over here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, fill this out real quick. So when you go in here and you drop down your vendors for sake of privacy, I'm not going to show the address book of this account and then send from, you're going to pick yourself and you're going to pick your subject. So when you go to your subject, you're going to just put something like, let's say job complete, and you can use tokens or want. So these tokens are things like job name, things of that nature. So you can go through this directory. This is what's going to be available to you to send information. Remember that light switch again, we're going to send information, but this whole thing, even though this is a trigger, it's part of the light switch. What we're going to do is select what information we want to send to the email and i'm going to explain you that in a minute so what you do here in your body let's say what's important to me is a job name let's say what's important to me is a job address let's say it's the owner's name um, let's say i want the claim number in there you can go down this list to whatever you like but mainly i'm going to want the primary contacts first name i'm going to put up enter right here i'm sorry and i'm going to put in the primary contact last name and I'm going to want their email and their phone number because I want to basically take this contact and do some magic things with it. When you set up things, I'm giving you a little bit longer version because depending on how you do it, there's things that we can do to make this information that's already available on the other side. But let's just go ahead and say this is the information we're sending. All right, cool. I got all that. Let's put a label in front of each of them, right? So I'm going to go here and just put job. Let me go here name so i'll pause for a second and go ahead and fill these out like this i'm going to put in the colon all right so, <clears throat> so you see what i've done here i've actually taken a boss up estimates is where it's going that's just what i labeled it now what i did was i used a email parser email address so what is that so when you go to zapier you can create email addresses. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is create an inbox. So we're gonna create an inbox and here is an email address that I use to create that contact. So I'm gonna take this email address and put it in the contact email, right? That's our first step. We have to do that. That's how it's gonna work. It's gonna to continue to look for an email and we're gonna not worry about that at the moment. But I want you to know what email I set for that boss up user. 
Now I go back and as you can see, I have my job name, colon, no spaces, no nothing. I have job name, address, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I've kept that there. Now what I'm gonna do to just make this a little bit better, I'm gonna put a dollar symbol here, dollar symbol at the end of all of these. Why? And you'll see in a minute. And we're going to send it out immediately. And I save that action, right? That's all I need to do to send the information. Now, in the email side, we want to go ahead and look at the information we captured. So now here we are inside of the email parser. I've recovered information that came over and it's showing me what came over. And you can see these different areas. Now, as a, yours isn't going to be exact. I'm just showing you how it works. So do you understand that? You can see here's my subject line. And then you can see here's this. Now, as I'm highlighting this and I could name the section. So if I name this F name, I name this hard before the comma treat, right? Now, it's very important to understand that sometimes there is some limits here. So I want to skip that space. I really just want the name. I'm going to put city. And it's understanding that between these commas or whatever, it's doing that. So I could say state. And everything's a little different. It gets a little tricky here, but this is what you're going to do. You're going to just go ahead and set up these little fields, right? And I'm just setting this up for, this one's a claim number. So you can see as I'm doing, it's not very difficult. I'm just going through and putting in F name out. Oh, you know what? I, this was the project. So I might want to change that if I wanted to, but let's just go with it for right now. I'm just going to change it from F name to first name. Um, just for the sake of time here, I'm going to do last name and I'm going to do phone. Now I could have passed a lot of other information. I could have passed over the job amount, anything that's an anchoring set, it was in one of those drop downs. I could have passed over, but there you go. I, I have that and I'm going to save that as a template and it's saved. So now that I have my email saved, it's this one here. Now that I have my email saved, I can do a lot more. I'm going to go back to our Zapiers and we're going to build a Zapier. So we're just going to go very, very simply create a Zapier. And what we're going to do is do a trigger and we're going to use our email parser. And there's our email parser. I pull that out. I say if every time there's a new email and I choose my account. So I believe that's my one. Let's go from there, choose a mailbox and I go here and there's my mailbox right there. Boom. I grab it. Continue. So now I have that. Now I could test my trigger and here's my information that came over. And also below it's actually taken the, the fields that we created, the payload and actually created these fields for us. So we have fields here as well. So I'll continue and um, that's pretty straightforward. It takes a minute to set up, but once you're set up, it's great and it works pretty good. So now what I can do is now that it's in Zapier, I could take this information. So let's just say I want to send it over to my bonus deal. So I will go in here and I want to change which location real quick. Uh, I'm sorry. I want to add or update a, a contact, right? That's what I want to do. Now it could be a lot of other things. You could have uh, where it sends an SMS from here. You could have where it goes into MailChimp. You could have where it does, et cetera, et cetera. You can go on right here without even using bombs and use things inside of Xavier. I'm going to continue. And now here, if you look, what I'm able to do, you see this parsed output first name. David, I'm able to now map and I can then put in David space Ellen. and I can go in now and create everything that I want to create. And if I have my custom fields mapped up properly in the information. So those of you that understand Zapier from this point, I can make a lot of magic happen. So that's the main part, but I'll continue and actually show you how to do that sequence that I told you but I want you to understand that part. So I'm gonna pause and fill all this information out. All right, so we're gonna pass this information over to our system. So we're gonna hit test and it's gonna go ahead and run its little deal. And it says that it was successful. So let me pull up in my bums. In it. And as you can see, my contact's been created and any information I sent over is here. Now, the other thing I can do is when a contact's created or I could send this contact over with a particular tag, like going back to here, when I'm setting up my actions, you'll see, you'll be able to create tags. Maybe I call this hot or complete or whatever. It's going to send that information over. So let's just use complete as a tag and we'll retest this real quick. And the good thing with bums is it's very intelligent. If complete doesn't exist, it's going to create it. And I can tell you in this case, it didn't exist and it will probably create it. So right now you can see here, there's no tag, but let's go ahead and refresh the screen. All right, complete. 
we're going to leverage the power of tag to make something truly magical happen here. So what we're going to do is go into auto magic and what we're going to do is create a workflow. And I'm going to do this a little quick because I have workflow training elsewhere, but let's just go ahead and create a workflow. And we're going to call this our job complete workflow, right? And our trigger is going to be that a tag is added and we're just going to call this complete. Again, naming conventions are very important when you're doing this, but don't worry about that at the moment. Tags added, tag is complete. And I'm going to say save. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to say what a job is complete, what do we want it to do? So the email went out. What do we want it to do? I want it to send a SMS. All right. Who are you going to send the SMS to is the person that you spoke to. Hi. And you're going to hit first name. I just left you a voicemail, but let me know if everything went well with the project. And if you have any feedback or improvement. Always ask for criticism. Honestly, it saves them from going to Google and criticizing you. Ask here. And then I can put my location name. So here I can use a custom value and I could go down to my account, use my account name, right? Save, done. So there's my SMS. Now I said I left him a voicemail. Does that mean I got to call him every single time and leave a voicemail? Not really. I'm going to show you something super cool. We're going to go here and we're going to do a voicemail. And what this does is, and we're going to just say, how was it for our email uh, or for our file? And what we're able to do is drop and upload a recording. This recording that I would make is going to be something like me speaking about the job. So as you can see here, what I've done, I've uploaded a recording. So you see, I never, David, I just said a very generic message, but it looks like somebody called, right? It looks like you cared enough to call them and ask. Now imagine leveraging that at different stages. Hey, you're going to receive your first check. Hey, you, uh, uh, we just did a supplement. Hey, uh, there was a change order. Hey, there was a rain delay. Doing this combination of taking a text message, a SMS, and you can go on here. We have some elaborate ones that we've built with emails and uh, links to landing pages that explain even further what that is required, or maybe a survey, sending them a survey of what you want to do and they actually send a survey link here. And what it will do is go there. So it's super powerful what you're able to do. And because I want to send that voicemail out before the text and let it look like it's a, like I'm actually doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and wait one minute after that. And I'm just going to say, boom. So I put in my wait to make it look a little bit more professional. And if they reply, they're going to reply on a channel that my entire team is on and they can help this person. And I'm going to let this one know as far as settings, I don't want to allow re-entry. I want to leave this message once. Otherwise it looks fake because every time they call, they're getting this message right now. And I can go ahead and publish that and save it. And what's going to happen is now, every time somebody goes to complete, they're getting a text message, they're getting an email and sky's the limit. What else you can do? You can do quite a bit more. So it's pretty amazing stuff that you're able to do there. And I think it's super powerful. This is a very cool way for you to leverage the power of tools outside of Aculinks by still using Aculinks. So I hope that was useful. If it was, please, of course, and subscribe, but also share your feedback. Tell me what you'd like to see it do. And I'd love to see what people are hoping to accomplish. And if you have some other ideas or you think something could work different, I'd love to hear from you. It'd be great. Uh, it's all a learning curve, right? So thanks guys. And I appreciate it.